All right, so what you want to do is open up um, Adobe Animate. And I, I've mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. When we want to make any of these animated projects not very intuitively, we want to make sure we're using ActionScript 3 as our uh, file type that will allow us to do scenes and other things. So let's create a brand new file of ActionScript 3. We'll put it at the usual size of 1080p. Uh, and then we're going to practice a little bit with camera movement and then also um, walk cycles. So new file, 1920 by 1080. I'm going to save that as um, today's date uh, practice. So file save as. I'm saving it to my flash drive. You can put today's date with with just uh, practice. 2018-06, 20 practice. OK, so the idea here is um, camera movement. If we've got a movie in real life, uh, you've got a camera, and you stand at a certain place, and you, and you shoot the action. And then maybe you, you press the zoom button on the camera, or maybe you move the camera closer. Or maybe you move the camera to the side a little bit to get a different perspective. Or you move it up and point it down and such. So in the real world, we have an ability to move a camera. And for a long time, Adobe Animate did not have an easy way to do that. Now they've got a, a way that is much easier than ever. So let's say uh, we're going to draw here um, a table with something on the table, like a plant or a vase or something, a vase. So I'm just going to draw a table. And it's going to be, I don't know, a plant on it. It's a sunflower, sure. So just a table. And it's in a room, I guess. So just an object somewhere on the screen doesn't quite matter where. I'm putting it somewhere in the middle. And we're going to then use uh, the camera to zoom into it and zoom out and move around on the scene. So just draw something like that. something on the screen, something in this scene. And um, I want different things to happen in about uh, four seconds or so. Uh, so on my current timeline, um, my current layer is layer one. Let's call that table. This, um, this layer is where the table is at. And I want stuff to happen for about four seconds. So we see here on our timeline, 24 frames is the first second, 28 frames is the second second, and then down here at 96 is the fourth second. So I want to continue to display the same, uh, the same scene, the same object up until this time. So you can do right click insert frame or F5 on the keyboard. We're going to extend. We're going to continue to show this. I'm going to lock this layer also. I, I don't need to do anything else with it. Actually, I do need to do one more thing incredibly important. Uh, this line right here is wrong. There we go. Perfect. So uh, I'm going to lock the layer table. It's visible for four seconds. Uh, the frame, the keyframe has extended from frame 1 to frame 96 by pressing F5. And now this is visible for 5 seconds. 
Uh, this is one of the things that I often see uh, as a beginner. Uh, we, I show the examples of the, the videos where like things happen too fast. Because in the person's mind, when they drew the scene, when they made the animation, in their mind it plays perfectly at the right speed. But then when you play it back for someone else, it's probably too fast. Uh, so don't be afraid to add more time to what you're looking at on screen. And simply it's pressing F5 to extend how long that keyframe is visible. Right now this scene is visible for 4 seconds. If I want it visible for 5 seconds, I just go to frame 120, press F5, and then now that will be visible for 5 seconds. So you can keep it at 4 seconds if you want, or put it to 5 like I did. Well, to use the camera, we've got a, an icon right here. It kind of looks like, um, I guess, a really old kind of camera, if you didn't notice that, or it looks like a weird mechanical duck or something. Uh, but it's a camera. Uh, hovering your mouse on that, it says Add Camera. So let's click Add Camera. That creates a new special layer. Uh, I wonder why the icon is not the same. Down here it's a little square, and over here it's a, it's, it's a little bit of a rounded square. So that's interesting. Okay, so we've added that. It's a brand new layer. And basically we want keyframes wherever we want the camera to change. We've currently got one, one keyframe right here. When the movie starts at frame one, the camera is this far back. Let's say I want to pause for one second and then start to move the camera. So at frame 24, at one second, in the camera layer, I'm going to press F6, which is the same as right click, insert keyframe. We should get used to the keyboard. So F6 creates a new blank keyframe. Nothing will happen on the first 24 frames. The camera will pause looking at the scene. Then I want to take uh, like six frames or so uh, to then start to zoom in. OK, well, if I'm thinking in terms of 24 frames per second means that there are 24 frames that fit in one second. If I want some action to take half a second, well, that takes 12 frames. 24 frames is one second, 12 frames is half a second. Then half of that, six frames. Well, that's a, you know, that's a quarter of a second. So in about a quarter of a second, in about six frames, I want the camera to zoom in. So if I'm at frame 24 plus 6, that's 30. So at about uh, frame 30, let's press F6 there. And now at this point, what I want to do is we have these um, we have these these icons here where if you grab this slider, you move it to the right, it zooms you in. You move it to the left, it zooms you out. So I'm going to move it over to the right some amount. Now if you move it all the way to the right, it looks like that's the maximum zoom. No, the weird thing is that if you move it all the way to the right and let it go, and then drag it again, you can zoom even further. It's kind of weird. So you, you can zoom in to all the way to the pixels. I don't want to go that far. But it's, it's like a relative kind of zoom. You can zoom it in a little bit, zoom it out. So I want to zoom it in some amount. Originally when I drew it, it was something like this. You see how the edges of my drawings went that far. I'm going to zoom it in some amount, something like this. Just grab that slider, slide it to the right. And then when you put your mouse on the actual scene, you get the little camera multi-angle uh, thing. And here it's kind of backwards. It's, I guess it's, you would call it Y-flipped, in that if I click and drag to the left, the, cam the, the scene moves to the right. If I click and drag to the right, the scene moves to the left. If I click and drag up, the scene moves down. It's kind of like when you play some of the FPSs where you move your you move your mouse or the arrow keys down, but it moves up. Because you kind of think about it in terms of a real camera. If you're tilting the camera to the left, you're actually moving the scene to the right. If I'm tilting the camera to the right, I'm moving the scene to the left. <clears throat> if I'm tilting the camera downward, again, the perspective is a little different. So it's a little weird when you first do it. But I want to move it around somewhere and zoom some amount like this. On frame 25, I've, I'm that far out. On frame 30, I'm this close in. And I want to animate the camera movement. I don't just want it to suddenly go from here to here, although that's perfectly fine. 
that's a way also to do, you know, the story of your dramatic, you know, you're suddenly looking at it here and then suddenly here, it zooms in. A, a, a big, I think it's called a smash cut, where you just suddenly go in like that, yeah. Instead, if you want animation, well, in between those two keyframes, uh, you can right click and insert a classic tween. So then it shows here, there's going to be an animation from here to here. And that's going to be like this. So at the beginning, there's a one second pause. Then it zooms in, kind of a little fast, but smooth. Let's say I want to pause here also uh, approximately half a second to see that we kind of zoomed in. OK, well, math is, is relevant once in a while in here, even though it gives you the the markers over here. This is three seconds, this is two seconds. Down here it says I'm on frame 30. I went from frame 1 to 24, it was one second. I then zoomed in at a quarter of a second, which is six frames. So 24 plus 6 goes to 30, frame 30. If I then want to pause another half second, how many frames is half a second? 12. 12. 12, yes. So if I'm at 30 plus 12, will give me that half a second. So that will be 42. We need to find frame 42, F6. So then we have then the pause. So what I'm saying about math is, if you know that one second is 24 frames, then you do, you do dividing or you do adding to figure out how much time things happen. If I wanted it to pause for one whole second, 24 frames, well, if I'm at frame 30, plus 24 becomes 54. So then I'd need to go over to frame 54, F6, and that's a one second pause. So there's the math of it. I only want to pause for half a second, 12 frames. 30 plus 12 is uh, 42. So I find frame 42. Let's press F6 on frame 42. One second pause at the beginning. One quarter of a second zoom in, half a second pause, and then now I want to move the camera to the right, and slowly, I want to take maybe one second to move over. Okay, if I'm at 24, one second is, I mean I'm at 42, one second is 24, so 42 plus 24 is, oh, if I say 66, right? Or so. So we're going to go to frame 66, press F6. So now at this frame 66, I want to move the camera again. I want to move it over to the, to the right, like I'm going to see something on the right of the scene, somewhere over here. At the same time, I'm also going to zoom in a little bit. So at this keyframe before, the scene is centered. Uh, this scene over here, I'm starting to move the camera to the right and zooming in a little bit also. There's going to be something there. In between those two, I want to right click insert um, classic tween. And when I play it, pressing enter, there's the pause, there's the dramatic zoom in, a little bit of a pause. And then it moves to the right. I want it then to pause where the camera currently is for one second and then have other stuff happened. OK, so here comes the math again. I'm at frame 66. I want to add one second, 66 plus 24, it becomes, uh, what's that? 90. 90, OK, so we'll go to frame 90, F6 right there. The camera is on its own layer, and it's independent of everything else. Let's say now, at this point, I want a ghost to appear, but this room is haunted. So 
after we move the camera over a little bit, I want a ghost to fade in here. Well, that's a matter then of creating a new layer for the ghost and animating and fading in. The camera's going to do its own thing on its own layer, moving up and down, left and right, zooming in and such. But then on any other layer, I could then do its own stuff. So I'm going to make a new layer, call it ghost. And uh, it can be above the table, but below the camera. And on frame 90 of the ghost layer, I can press uh, F7 to create a blank keyframe. That's the same as right click, insert blank keyframe. So when we insert a frame, we continue to show the same action that's already there with insert frame. Um, with uh, ins uh, insert keyframe, um, it copies the previous keyframe to perhaps make a change. With F7, insert blank keyframe, we have a brand new frame to do something else. And so in this, um, in this new frame here, I'm going to draw a ghost. Uh, I'm going to draw it first, then we're going to make, then, then we're gonna make it invisible, and then we're going to make it visible. So I want it to fade in. But first I'm going to draw a ghost. So let's draw some ghost here. Make it with really cute eyes. It's lost. In order for us to do any of the animation um, that is automated from Adobe Animate, we usually work with um, symbols. Uh, you can draw it all frame by frame, of course, but here it would be a lot easier to have it uh, fade in with effects. So this ghost drawing that I made, you want to select it completely with the selection tool. Just select the whole thing that you drew there. We can press F8 to turn it into a symbol. Type of movie clip, usually what we want. Name, we'll call this MC Ghost. So you draw your, you draw your element, you select it, F8 to convert it into a symbol. Now that it's a symbol, we can uh, fade it, rotate it, do a bunch of things with it. So it's got a name. On frame 100, let's press F6. It copied the keyframe. So in the movie, We've got this, the camera moving around, the camera moves over to this corner of the room. Um, I'm going to have the ghost be invisible and then fade into visible. So I've drawn it on frames 90 and 100 that it's visible. But because I've turned it into um, a symbol, I can then use effects on it, such as to turn it transparent. I'm going to go back to frame 90 and then select your ghost. Once you've got that object selected, you have a variety of options in your Properties panel. So frame 90, I've selected the ghost. It hasn't selected. Uh, it doesn't make sense, but it's under Color Effect. We're going to fade it out, but not... We're going to fade it out with an effect under the Color Effect. Um, so under Color Effect here, we have Style, and we'll select Alpha. Alpha is transparency. And I'm going to change the alpha down to 0. So on frame 90, that symbol is alpha 0. On frame 100, it's alpha 100. And in between, I can add a classic tween. And it'll do a fade in. So 
So now if I do a quick play of my movie, we've got the scene, a little zoom in, move to the right, ghost fades in, scene starts over. Let's say then to be really dramatic then, I'm going to move the camera after it fades in, I'm going to move the camera really fast into the face of the ghost. So it fades in and let's say starting at frame uh, 110, we need a new camera movement. So F6. On frame 120, F6, that copies the frame. This is now in the, in the uh, camera, in the camera um, layer. I'm going to switch over to the camera tool. We've, uh, we've added, here's the, the tricky part sometimes. We first activated the camera by pressing the camera button so we get a camera layer. If we click that again, that'll actually remove the camera. It's not intuitive. I want to switch to the camera tool to make changes to the camera again. Well, it's the camera tool. So you first turn on the camera down here, then to use it again, you switch back to the camera tool. If you accidentally press that one again and deleted your camera, try to undo that, you should bring it back. So on the camera layer, frame 120, I'm going to select the camera tool again. I get back the tool here. And then what I'll do again here is uh, I'll uh, put the ghost in the middle there, zoom in. So between frame 110 and 120, that's where I will add a classic tween. I've got the zoom. Now again, in my mind, the zoom happens, it fades in, the zoom happens, and OK, we, we pause there and we see the ghost. If I play it, it will show the zoomed in ghost for, like, you know, a split second, because it'll then start over. It'll start over right at frame 120, automatically back to frame 1. So we need to show maybe a two second pause at the end of this animation. So I'm at frame 120. Two seconds will be 48 frames. 48 plus 120, that's 168. So on frame 168 of all three layers, I want to press F5. And the fast way to do that is if you click and drag to select uh, frames 168 for all three layers, I can F5 all three of them at once. So look at that again. If I click on the camera layer, F5. Click on the ghost layer, F5. Click on the table layer, F5. Waste of time. A more efficient way is if you click and drag and select all three of those layers first, and then F5, all three of them get extended two seconds. Now the odd thing is be careful if you click one time on frame 168 and then drag to select. You're not actually going to drag to select. You're, you're going to move something there, which may or may not do something weird. So you just want to do one action of click and drag, frame 168, and then F5. So now I've got um, two seconds of a pause after the animation on all the layers. And if I do control enter to test it, there's the pause, starts over. Now if I want to get fancy here, I want then the mouth to move or the eyes to blink. That's a matter of then drawing, uh, adding more layers and drawing more things. Um, there's so many ways to do this animation in that I could edit the original symbol. But maybe the way I've got it here, maybe I'll just make a brand new layer called mouth. And in the mouth layer, start to animate a mouth. 
So a new layer, we'll put it above the ghost, call it mouth. In my case, it doesn't quite matter the order, simply because everything is transparent. I'm just drawing with blue lines, everything is transparent. But you, when you uh, draw and color things in and all of that, most likely then the order of things does matter. And so from top to bottom uh, is how they will appear uh, on, on screen. So I've got a brand new layer for mouth and on frame 168, I'll press F7 on the uh, on the on the mouth layer I'll press F7 and I want to do some mouth movements in about a second in about a second on my timeline and it tells me here uh, 192 or so is about 8 seconds so here I will also extend all of these frames F5, all of them, because then I'm going to focus on what's happening in the mouth layer. And what I'll do here is I'll do a little bit of frame by frame animation for the mouth uh, to appear and then maybe to open up and move. And the way I would do this is um, so I've got my brush tool, I'm going to draw a little bit of a mouth. I'm going to jump over two frames, and if you don't know this, I think one of the best keyboard shortcuts is the comma and the period. The period on the keyboard moves you two, moves you one frame at a time on the uh, timeline. The comma moves you back one frame at a time. So uh, here, uh, I'm going to start to draw the mouth a little bit at a time. I'm going to jump over two frames, F6 and then draw a little bit more of the mouth. Jump two frames over so you can press period twice or click with your mouse two spots over. F6 to copy that frame. Draw a little bit more of the mouth. Jump two frames. F6. So I'm just adding to what's already what's already there with F6. I'm just building on it. What I'm doing there is adding a little bit more, a little bit more. And this is traditionally known as animating in twos, in that I draw a little bit, I make a little change to the drawing, and then I jump over two frames. Change it a little bit more. Jump over two frames, change it a little bit more. This is animating in twos. Every two frames is a little change. It creates pretty smooth animation. Uh, if you put too many frames in between, it looks a little choppy. Uh, you could then get even more high quality, and every frame is a different bit of a change. That's a lot more complex. So that's drawing in ones, or animating in ones. This frame has a drawing, this next frame has a different drawing, and another drawing, another, and another. You could do it that way, that's a lot of work, a lot of effort, but it's the smoothest kind of animation where every single frame has a little bit of a change. Perhaps as a starting point, animating in twos might give you good results as you get practice with it. So jump two frames over and then change it a little bit. And so again, period and comma let you jump a couple of frames over. And then F6.
So suddenly it's not so Casper the Friendly Ghost. So a lot of what you do in any of these films are, are the details. Uh, you start to draw something, you get an idea, you start to then spend your time to get the details, and that, that's great. We have the, we'll, we'll have the time after the lecture uh, to, do your, to do your work. Uh, here I'm just kind of really freestyling an idea. The big idea is the camera movement. Uh, there's a scene, we zoom in, the ghost appears, I zoom into the ghost. The ghost looks friendly, uh, maybe not so friendly. And again there, in my mind, it paused and it looked really evil for, for a long time, but it happened way too fast because I didn't give enough of a pause at the end. So play it. When you're doing your animations, play it and replay it and, and then you know count it down in your mind and, oh, that's not as... as um, that wasn't how I thought it was. Show someone else, say, take a look at this. How does, uh, how does this shot look? Oh, they'll tell you it's too fast or it's too slow and such. Because again, in my mind, uh, I thought he looked uh, evil there long enough, but then it suddenly starts over. So easy fix there. I'm just going to go back. Whoops. First of all, I'm not going to close animate. Uh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to um, add some more time at the end of that. So the the evil face is visible from frames 184 to 192. It's not that long at all. Uh, I wanted to go for one second, so at about 216 frames. Again, all, all of the, all of the layers have to be visible more time, so all of them get a shot of f5, so that the camera continues to be visible for that amount of time paused at that place, so that the mouth layer continues to be visible for that amount of time, so that the ghost layer, so that the table layer, so everything's visible for some amount of time. To all of it, I gave it six, uh, I gave it the, the 24 uh, extra frames or so. Now when I play it, I see this, I see the zoom, I see the move over, the apparition, face, pauses there, Maybe even more time. It's okay. Add more time. Um, how much does it need it to, to stay paused there? Maybe at that point I then play a sound effect, a scary, you know, the, the psycho theme at that point. But at this, uh, at the moment, it's it's a little still too short. One second, 24 frames is still now, I think, a little too short. So easily I go back and add some more time. F5. Okay, any questions on that so far? The idea is using the camera. Uh, it's a relatively easy tool to use. You just have to first activate the camera layer with that button down at the bottom. And then you can use the camera tool over here to then reposition the scene. You will start to see as you practice with it, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward, very powerful, but then now you have to think about it in terms of a little bit differently. If I zoom out, even further, right here, everything that I drew still exists. It's just that I've zoomed in so far into a piece of my animation that it's out of the canvas. So the flower is still there. I focus on the ghost. That's what's sticking in my whole frame. That stuff is still there. And that's the cool thing about Adobe Animate because of the, the way that um, it, internally, it's all vector graphics. It's all mathematical formulas. 
So uh, we're able to zoom in and keep high quality if we're using the brush tool, the various built-in uh, animation tools. So I'm going to save that. Then we're going to talk about white walk cycles. But any questions on this at, at the moment? OK, I want to do a walk cycle in a different file, actually. So uh, I'm going to save this practice, this ghost practice. Let's create a brand new file. Again, action script three. Nineteen twenty by ten eighty. We'll call it walk cycle practice. So the thing about a walk cycle that it is it, it's going to be difficult in terms of thinking you know where do the where do the legs and the arms and all of that go it's going to depend on your character of course um, does it even have legs is it is it uh, two legs four legs uh, is it uh, a, a robot does it have wheels so the walk cycle is going to be done differently for different people but most of what I've seen in your model sheets and storyboards there's going to be some form of um, some form of bipedal creature now here I just drew some uh, weird little guy that's gonna walk uh, the, the again this is walk cycles are hard so here's how we're gonna do this so whatever I drew here just take that away what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a, um, a a starting point we're gonna do a little bit of tracing to help us understand uh, how to uh, how things walk so uh, let's um, save what you've got there. Uh, let's minimize Adobe Animate for a moment. Uh, don't exit it, but just minimize the software. I've got a file for you in the network folder. So go over to this PC, and then let's go over to the My Documents network folder. And then let's go into the CIS126 folder, and then copy, uh, right-click Copy, that file there called walk two legs side copy that to your desktop so you can do right click copy right click paste to your desktop I've got a little starting point and uh, for various um, walk cycles that we can borrow for walking for running for sleeping and stuff um, to start off with so copy that to your desktop uh, and then in animate we will open it so that we can use it to do a little tracing. So I've copied it to the desktop, back to Adobe Animate. We're going to go to File Menu, Import to Stage. We're going to bring in some other file into this file. And um, this is also perfectly legitimate if you'd like for your projects. You can open up you know, take a photo of yourself and then open it in Animate and then trace yourself, sure. Take a photo of, of you know, the, this building, open it up, import it into Animate and trace it and make it cartoony. You can do all of that with this import command. So file import to stage. And on your desktop then you should have that, that graphic. You can then open it. It's a little bit small, so what we're going to do is let's zoom out to about 25% or so, and uh, let's stretch out the graphic so that it uh, uh, will focus on the very first type of walk cycle here. So I'm going to stretch this graphic really big so that it focuses on this first strip as big as the canvas is. If, we, if you try to trace it this small, it's going to be a little too small. So uh, put it there, and then with your free transform tool, uh, stretch it so that it fills up as much as the width of it. Something like this. I'm going to stretch it out. Something like this. Really big. So the edges of my 1080p document are right there. I've made the graphic really big so that I can see each one of these. And so here we go, take a regular walk, a double walk, double bounce walk, a strut, a shot. 
question for all of us. What I really like about this graphic as a, as a way to trace it is look at how it breaks it down. Very simple character, but here's the very first pose. You just look at it like this. If I do the same pose that this is doing, uh, he's got the legs out like this, and then an arm back here, and an arm like this. So if I'm doing what he's doing right there. This arm that's further from you is that arm that's dark right here. Uh, the leg, so uh, the, my leg back here that's further from you is the leg that's further right there than the leg that's straight out like that. So he's kind of like this, right? Then on the next step, he's uh, starting to bend the legs a little bit and bring the arms a little back. So he's going to do a walk like this, and then like this. And it shows really well where the arms are going. If you just focus on that arm in the back, look at how it is there. Then it's coming back a little bit. It's coming back more behind the body, coming back even more, further behind the body. Then it's going to come back to the other side, further back, further back, and then it's going to come back. So it's going to come back and forth. This arm right here is going to come back and forth like this. The arm closest to us is doing the same thing in the opposite way. First it starts on the back here, then it comes a little forward, then forward, then back, then back. So this one's going to be going back and forth. This one's going the other way, like this. And then the, the leg, the front leg, it's going to be going forward, and then going on it, and then coming back, and going forward, and the other leg. So, also, look at the lines that are going across. At a certain point, the head is at the lowest point here, and it's at the highest point here. Because when I'm walking, and my legs are out like this, I'm a little bit shorter. When I'm standing like this, I'm a little bit taller. When I'm over here, I'm a little bit shorter. It's just the physics of the body, because here, all my height is there, and then here, it's shorter because I'm not this far out. To get even more exaggerated, like over here, he, he stuck the head down here and up here, and right here, sneaking down here, and when you put it all together, it's a really exaggerated sort of movement, but you get the idea of he's sneaking around. He's walking on with it, he's strutting. Notice how this one, the arms go up higher, then over here, it's just really strong like this. And also, the back is more straight. So we'll start with this one first. We'll do a little bit of tracing. We'll see how it comes together. And this is going to be really useful if you want to use it in your projects. You can trace on top of what is here, draw your own character. These are the, I mean, is this like eight frames that you need? Not two, not two, not six, eight, yeah. Eight frames or so, repeated over and over, that will make a walk cycle. This layer, let's call it wax, and let's lock that layer, and let's make a new layer. All of the wax are in their own layer, and it's locked, and I've got a new layer where I'm going to draw my character. Uh, I'm going to trace this, not perfectly, but as close as what that is, maybe with a red color so that it stands out. And each one of these poses, it's going to be on its own, uh, on its own uh, frame. Now, when, we, when I was drawing the mouse, I was saying about drawing in twos. I've got eight frames. Uh, I'm going to need two frames per pose, 2 times 8 is 16, so we need about 16 frames to do this. So on frame 16 of the walk layer, I'll press F5 so that I continue to see my template for 16 frames. On frame 1 of the character layer, I'm going to start to draw the first pose here. So it's something like this. I think it's too thick. Let me change. Let me change the size of my brush. So 
frame one, and then also kind of looking at, here's the curve of the body there. Here's a hand, the curve of the back, the leg, the foot. This hand is over here. This leg is back here. For the next frame, I'm going to jump over two frames, and I will press F7 for a new uh, drawing. So this is, again, uh, I hope you get used to using the, the keyboard. I'm going to press the period two times to jump over two frames, press F7 to create a brand new blank keyframe, and then I'm going to draw the next pose. Doesn't have to be perfect, but if you follow it as best as possible here, you'll get a sense of, okay, I see that the leg is bent at this pose. That leg that was straight a moment ago now is starting to bend. The arm, the white arm, is starting to come close back to the body again. The black arm is starting to come back into the body also. The black leg is starting to also bend. Dot, move to frame 5, F7, draw the next pose. By this time, the white arm now is starting to cover the body. It's now come close enough that it's covering the body. The black leg is starting to rise off of the ground. You can see by using the period and the comma to go back and forth, that's where it was, that's where it is, back and forth. Two frames over, F7. Now, uh, what you could also do is, while we're drawing these different frames, you could turn on this option down here, uh, the uh, onion skinning, onion skin. If you turn that on, it will show you your various uh, drawings frame by frame. Sometimes that's useful. But I'm going to go to the fourth pose. At this point, the character is like the tallest because it's standing on one leg. And you see that, that curve where the head is at, it's at one of the tallest areas. Because uh, if you observe that phenomenon, that it is that when you're standing on two legs or, or one leg outstretched, you're at your tallest. And as you go through your gait, um, you get you, you kind of bob up and down somewhat in cartoons if you exaggerate it in animation if you exaggerate it it's actually a little more realistic when you exaggerate movement it actually looks more realistic than if it was not exaggerated
So take a moment to draw each of those poses, um, and then we will see what, how we kind of put it together. So I'll give you a moment to finish this, but the idea is uh, we've got these eight different poses, that's all you really need to do a walk cycle because then after this pose happens, this one will automatically come back here, which is that the, <coughs> this leg that used to be in the back is then going to move forward, which is going to be over here. And then again, it's going to go down here, start to move back, move back, 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 and then forward again. So. Um, We've got them on separate frames, and we've got them in separate positions. After we're all done drawing, we're going to combine them all into one spot, so that all of them get put into one spot, one object, one symbol, uh, and then we can have that as one reusable movement. Uh, right now it's kind of moving left to right across the canvas, but if we put it in one spot, one symbol, then we can easily put it in different parts of the movie. Let me let you finish doing that, and then we will put it together, and I'll show you how to do that.
Okay, so what I want to do here is um, this walk, uh, the, the walks layer. I'm going to hide it. Now I've only got the actual character that I drew. And what I've got here is that the character moves um, across the screen. I want all of them to be in the same place. So we can um, combine them all into the the one same po the one same position. Uh, if we uh, turn on the onion skinning, it shows here. Show me uh, this frame to this frame, and so it shows the current frame and the next frame. If I go to that frame there, okay, it shows me that frame, that frame, and that frame. The point of that is for me to see then so that I can uh, select that. You can click on the frame, it selects everything, and then with the, uh, with the mouse, move it in place there. Or better yet, uh, with the arrows on the keyboard. If you hold down Shift and then the arrow keys, you can move it exactly, you know, up and down exactly. Instead of with the mouse, which I might accidentally move it a little too high up there, and then now it's not lined up anymore. So here, definitely, you want to use shift left arrow to just move it over somewhere so it kind of lines up somewhere. Seems like if you can line it up as close to the, the head as possible, that'd be good. And when I jump over to the next keyframe, same sort of thing. I want to move that over to the left, somewhere around there. Next keyframe, shift left, move it over. doesn't have to be perfect. You probably don't want to move it up and down, but left and right you can find the spot. And this is all working because I've got the, uh, the this onion skin turned on. This shows you before and after. Current frame, previous frame. So then next frame, move it in here. Next frame. last frame I'll turn off onion skinning now when I play it the movement is happening actually also what I want to do this walk layer just because you've hidden it uh, doesn't mean it will not show so actually what we can do with that layer is if you right click your walks layer uh, and you select um, is it uh, set that as as a guide? Can you still do that? I guess there. Okay. Uh, it, on your walk layer, if you right-click properties and select guide, then it won't be visible anymore when you actually play it. Control enter. So here we've got um, the character now moving without the background. All of the uh, frames are in their own, all of the poses are in their own frame. All of the frames have been lined up in one spot. The automatic looping of the, of the character then starts it over and then it's on the next pose. Uh, I feel there's a little bit of a jump at one point. Well, that's me having to go back and, and kind of draw it a little closer to what the original template was. Maybe I moved the leg a little too far, and it looks like the leg moves too fast. I see, looking at some of you, it looks a little better. You followed it a little bit more. I maybe did it too loose. But that, that's the idea there. OK, so it looks like it's walking now. Uh, to make this then um, a reusable object to, to make it uh, easily 
put into different frames and such, different scenes, it would be a good idea to turn it into a symbol. Well, this is going to be a little advanced in that we've got several frames in this layer. But we can copy a complete layer, every single frame, we can copy a whole layer to a symbol. The way I would do it is, let me do it first, then we'll do it together. I'm going to select that layer, and then you can uh, copy the whole layer. And then in your uh, library, you can create a new symbol, call it uh, MC Walker, and you can paste that layer. So now that um, is all in one complete symbol. So that what you can do is you can reuse the symbol multiple times. I'll do this again in a moment. I'm just doing it kind of fast. But here, I've got different copies of the walker. And we can uh, have it do its, um, its own thing. Let me just do this, then I'll go back to show you. I can quickly create different ones. Now, I, I did have to put it in its own layer. Um, so let me go back and show you what I did there. did it kind of fast, but the idea is you can copy a complete, you can copy a complete layer. So step one, uh, you can click your character layer to select it. You see then it selects everything in the layer. You can then right click the, the icon of your layer and select copy layers. In your uh, panels over here, you, you should see property and you should see library. You can go to library. Down at the bottom, we've got the icon to create a brand new symbol. Create a new symbol. MC Walker. It's a movie clip. It's got a name. Now I'm editing the symbol. So I was in scene one. Now I'm editing the symbol. I've got a, an empty layer, layer one. So I can then right click, paste layers. The control C, control V, I don't believe works exactly the same because it, that doesn't copy layers. That copies things in a layer. So you want to make sure you do right click, copy, right click, paste layers. It's down here. You can position it to the center if you'd like. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but then now I've moved the character to its own symbol. I can go back to scene one and then in a brand new layer, call it, I don't know, Walker. And then I can drag copies of that symbol out of my library and put them in different sizes. Can even flip it around. I'm going to turn that character layer into a guide just to kind of hide it. And on this new layer, I've got <clears throat> these different instances of the symbol. And then here I'm playing with perspective. So if I've got my uh, parallax scrolling background, the background could be doing its own thing, it's moving around, and I drop this into the scene and it's doing its own thing. Um, that might be fun. Let me, let me try that. I'm going to open up that um, the thing from last time. I'm gonna copy this symbol into the other to the other thing.
So this that I drew in one file as a as separate frames, and then I put it into one symbol. I then put it into um, my um, project from the other day, and the background is doing its thing. How I animated that. The character is doing its thing. It's, it's in its own symbol. It's going to do its own animation. And now it's going to be part of the scene. And now it looks like it's part of walking into the scene. So this um, this walk cycle template, we have these various ones. What else? So here's a run. Maybe you need your character to run. Run fast. Tiptoe. Skip. So these would be the starting points. Uh, what you would do then for your own character. You know, you're starting with your with your drawing here and in your own character, hopefully then you can use that to further trace your own character. Like um you know, I just took here the, the basic shape, but maybe I'm drawing some sort of like I don't know, cartoon character, hair, ears the mouth, eyes, and then start to, you know, some cat character or something. I'm obviously going to then care about it more and draw it for real, but here I'm just showing that then I can start to draw my character on top of the, um, on top of that starting point. And based on those uh, simple drawings from the template, I drew my own character. Now, remember, this is going to be one of the requirements in, of the assignment, uh, some kind of walk cycle. You have here these starting points of walking or running, tiptoe, sneaking. It's eight frames. Uh, and especially if you've got some sort of character that is humanoid, you should be able to do it. If you've got uh, some of you that have perhaps like a robotic character or a ghostly character, you'll still be able to do a version of it. You know, the arms are moving, perhaps. Maybe the little uh, wheels of the vehicle move. You should be able to do it. If you're having trouble, of course, check with me. We'll see what we can do. But um, this is going to be the lecture at, at the moment, a walk cycle, this template here that should hopefully help you, and plenty of time to work. We're going to do the lab in just a moment. Questions, then, on the walk cycle? It really is a lot about the practice, but any questions on it? Okay, so we'll uh, start the, the lab. I'll put a copy of my animation here if you just want to have it, if you'd like, into the network folder, and we'll start the lab now. Take a break whenever you'd like. We'll work until 4. Mind your time. We were having so much fun last time that we didn't uh, uh, close up in time. So, uh, you know, when it's about 10 minutes before 4, you should start packing your stuff up. And uh, I'll be here. If you need any help, call me over. If you need a tablet or headphones or whatever, they're over here, and we'll work until 4. Remember, this is going to be due a week from today. We had last time to work. We have today to work. And the next two class meetings, I don't expect to do any lectures. I expect it to be all uh, lab, unless people request a lecture for whatever. And we'll have then, it'll be due on a week from today, Wednesday, 4 o'clock, uh, the 27th.